Welcome back to Engineering Acoustics. Hi, this is Professor Ryan Harn. In this video, we'll learn how transmission loss measurements of walls are related to a unifying sound transmission metric. So let's get started. We know that transmission loss data helps engineers appreciate the quantities of sound that are prevented from propagating through walls. And these come in octave bands or potentially one third octave band numbers. But all of these numbers are quite complex for designers who would prefer a much more straightforward way to understand the same information, how much sound is prevented from propagating through a wall. So enter the sound transmission class. STC is the metric we use to consolidate all TL measurements into a single number. This simplified presentation is easy for anyone to appreciate whether or not one or another wall design change actually makes an improvement that would be meaningful. So STC also inhibits people from marketing narrow band transmission loss enhancements since they will not contribute very much to changes in STC. The means of computing STC is comparing data, such as the blue data in this chart, with STC ratings, like that one shown in red in the chart. So what are these STC ratings? They are found in ASDM E413. The STC rating equals the value of the curve at 500 hertz. So if we consider 500 hertz, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, and we draw a straight line down this plot, the STC rating for that curve is equal to the value that intersects with this line. And we see the even numbered STC ratings shown here on the right as labels. So the measured TL is compared against these ratings and a method determines the differences between the measurements and the ratings and we find the nearest rating that matches the trends of the measured panel. The method is also given in this ASTM standard. So what is this method? We rate the STC of a partition using a few steps. First, we measure the TL for the partition, and we post-process it into one-third octave bands from 125 hertz to 4 kilohertz. The deviations are then computed as the difference between the STM rating curve and the measured TL. And what we mean by deviation, it is equal to the STC curve minus the transmission loss in decibels. Only positive de deviations are recorded. We neglect negative deviations. Now, now that we have our deviations, we find the highest STC rating that meets two compliance metrics. The first metric, there is no individual deviation that is greater than eight decibels. Secondly, the sum of all deviations from 125 hertz to four kilohertz in the one third octave bands must not exceed 32 decibels. And the highest STC rating that satisfies this for our measured TL is the STC rating for the partition. So let's complete an example. We measure the transmission loss and plot it out in one third octave bands, and the data is shown here in blue. Now we first compare the ratings where there are few deviations. In other words, where the measured data is much greater than a given STC rating curve. So we'll start off with STC 46. There are only a few deviations here. They're highlighted in magenta. And when we run the numbers, the total deviations add up to be seven decibels and the maximum one is four decibels. So we're well away from the compliance metric. Let's move up in the STC rating to STC 48. Now, there are a few more deviations here. They're highlighted in magenta and we find that their sum is equal to 14 decibels and the maximum value is six. So we're still below our compliance metrics. Let's keep moving up. Let's go to STC 50. We have far more deviations now, and when we add them up, they total 26 decibels and eight decibel max. So we are right on the verge of violating the first compliance metric no deviation may exceed eight decibels. So let's move up one more just to see what happens. STC 51, lots of deviations now. The total deviation is 37 decibels and the maximum is nine. So the STC rating for the panel 
is STC 50, because now it has failed, in this case, both compliance metrics uh, for STC 51. So what is the significance of using STC? Well, it's not simply an easy way of presenting the overall measure by which the panel or partition prevents sound from propagating, but it actually agrees very well with subjective evaluation of how someone feels insulated from sounds around them. So STC 30 means that between one and another room, we can actually hear speech fairly intelligibly. We can hear it quite audibly. STC 40 steps this up so that we can hear loud speech, but it's not quite intelligible. STC 45 makes it barely audible for us to hear even the loudest of speech. But as we go up in transmission loss to a rating of STC 50, shouting is barely audible while we might hear music, especially if speakers, for instance, are placed near to walls like they often are. STC 50 indicates that shouting is generally not even audible, while STC 60 indicates that music can be faintly heard, while bass notes might actually carry due to the very long wavelengths involved. And STC 60 is an important cutoff. A transmission loss of 60 decibels indicates that the partition prevents almost all of the sound power from passing. In fact, only one one millionth of the sound power gets through when the transmission loss is 60. So for an STC of 60, this means that on average, or so to speak, up around one one millionth of the power is getting through. So the increase STC even further requires an extraordinary enhancement of performance. So STC 65 is almost perfect insulation between rooms of almost any disturbance. And to avoid a totally mass-dependent solution, engineers use this characterization of subjective evaluation to find clever ways to eliminate direct sound paths without excessive use of mass. Let's return to our table of transmission loss values for stud walls. So for the single stud wall, when we work out all the numbers and of course use one-third octave band data, a standard stud wall with drywall on both sides would lead to an SDC around 34. When we change to a double stud wall with no insulation, the STC rating increases by 11, so we now have a rating of STC 45. We don't want to refer to this as an 11 decibel increase since there's not a one-to-one -one comparison between decibel increase in transmission loss and STC change. Now, when we add insulation to that double stud wall, our STC rating goes from 45 to 67, an extremely high STC rating, almost perfect insulation between rooms. Very high-end uh, condos, high-end multifamily dwellings might use this type of construction so that the owners of those units are completely insulated, feeling like they're in their own environment. Let's also look back at masonry. We saw that concrete itself had a very good transmission loss from 125 hertz to 4 kilohertz. When we work that out in terms of STC rating in one-third octave bands, we find that it leads to an STC of 45. We then found that a standard single brick wall had slightly less transmission loss at low frequencies and slightly greater transmission loss at high frequencies than that concrete wall. But when you work out the STC ratings, they are the same. They both have an STC of 45. Of course, there are other differences in the selection between a concrete wall and a brick wall. For instance, thermal considerations to take into account. When we go from one layer of brick to three, our STC increases to STC 59. So it's important to recognize that STC 59 for three layers of brick is less an SDC of 67 for a double stud wall with insulation. That elimination of the direct path of sound is significant to suppress sound transfer between rooms. So let's summarize what we've learned. We've learned that the sound transmission class ranks the capability of a partition to insulate two listening spaces on the basis of one third octave band transmission loss measurements. The SDC rating is easily undertaken by comparing the data to a rating table. 
And this also reduces the contributions of narrowband transmission loss enhancements, since the STC rating effectively blurs over those small narrowband contributions, leading to one meaningful subjective noise level metric. That's it for this video. In the next video, we'll learn about a sound level metric that relates sound transmission between floors.